what we've got here is failure to not buy microphones. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, well, you guessed it, another comparison of another pair of two budget broadcast microphones seems to be a reoccurring thing on this channel but i do like the concept and i really love buying microphones i'm just it seems to be a problem of mine uh well, that's only a problem if you make it a problem in which case i'm not having i i don't have a problem that's usually what people say that they have problems but regardless I'm very excited about this comparison because the PD70 is my choice for the best budget broadcast microphone on the market today. And mostly because it's flexibility with kind of tweaking it to your liking easier than other ones. It might not be perfect out of the box, which it is pretty close, at least in my opinion, but I really like the tone and I really like how flexible it is. But the newcomer here, the AT2040, could be a different style. I'm not going to say that it's a competitor yet. I need to listen to it a little bit more and compare the two. But I will say that it definitely has some attributes to it that could be appealing to some so first up on the docket today we have the build as always we always talk about the build first on this channel because it's just easier to build a foundation off the build of these microphones and that was just something off the top of my head and i'm gonna roll with it so both of these microphones are built very well certainly not as heavy as the pod mic but the PD70 and the AT2040 both have very sturdy builds. They have some heft to them, so it feels like you're actually getting a microphone and not a Tonka toy like some microphones that we've spoken about on this channel. So back to these two, you see that we have a shock mount here on the AT2040. This is the 20 series shock mount for all the 20 series microphones by Audio-Technica. So to dive a little bit deeper, and I've said this in a lot of videos, the PD-70 is built very well, and underneath the hood, you have a grill that is very reminiscent of this guy right here. And it's a really well-made, uh, very sturdy grill. You can see a little bit of enforcement on the diaphragm, but when it comes to enforcement on a diaphragm, the AT2040 certainly takes the cake because they did a great job building this thing. The build on this is amazing. But before I go into that, let's finish up on the PD70. It is back heavy, which is very common for certain broadcast microphones because they usually have all their innards focused on the back end and the diaphragm and the grill don't weigh that much. So it's not going to be like well balanced, but it doesn't need to be well balanced as if it's on a boom arm or whatever. The half yoke mount is a nice touch, but I feel like it hurts it when it comes to rejection of noise. So before we do that, the AT2040 has a lot of stuff going on about it. Great build, got some heft to it, like I said before. And if you go under the hood, there is a bit of a reinforcement pop filter on the inside of the grill here. Really well made and certainly more than the PD70 is offering, but we'll go ahead and go into the plosive test in the booth. So one last thing on the builds, there is a reinforced like rubber bushing around the diaphragm that's supposed to be like a shock absorber for the AT2040, which I want to give it a test right now. We're going to tap a little parts here and there and see what you think and compare it to the PD70. So tapping the quick release right now, of course it has a shock mount if you want this test without the shock mount with the regular mount go check out the other videos tapping the shock mount and tapping the microphone right around where the diaphragm is going over to the pd70 tapping the quick release the yoke mount and the body itself You guys let me know what you think as far as that test is concerned. Uh, 
I know the PD70 has some noise when handling, but the AT2040 certainly has a lot going for it, especially when you add on the shock mount. It might be overkill, but uh, if you check out those other videos or if you saw those other videos, let me know what you think about the comparison. So finishing up on the builds, I really do prefer the 2040 because of that extra enforcement on the diaphragm and it's really cool look i know i seem like an audio technica fanboy and i really do love the build of the the pd70 but the 2040 certainly is a better build in my mind you guys let me know down in the comments what you think next up we're going to get into some techie talk and really talk about the innards and how these things tick So the first thing that stands out is, of course, the polar pattern difference. We have a cardioid polar pattern on the PD-70, while the AT-2040 has a hypercardioid. Main difference is, cardioid's a little more inflated heart shape with rejection in the back and on the sides. Hypercardioid, very similar to a supercardioid, it's basically a little more honed in. And it's got some nice rejection on the sides, the 90s, and especially in that sweet spot in the 120 to 150 range. Depending on the microphone, that's where you get it. But the byproduct of that is you have a pickup on the rear. It's not much, but there is some, which we'll get into in the off-axis rejection in the studio and in the untreated room as we do here on the Rebel Tech channel. The next thing I want to point out is their sensitivities. And they're very similar. It's a little bit off. But the AT2040 is negative 53 decibels, while the PD70 is at negative 56. It's three decibel difference, but right now I'm recording uh, them about the same level. They're, they're roughly about the same level, uh, not the same gain level, which I'll tell you in a sec. The PD70 is recording at 60 decibels, so I'm giving it a healthy 60 decibels going into the Zoom F6. The AT2040, on the other hand, has 55, so 5 less decibels, which makes sense. There's a 3 decibel difference. Sometimes the preamp kind of makes a difference with it, and sometimes maybe the way that they're faced. I mean, they're pretty much faced the same way, So, and maybe the levels are just a little bit off here and there. They look fairly level, uh, but for the most part, that's how they are. So it might be the difference of like one or two decibels when it comes to the recording of this, but I got it as close as I can. Now, lastly, the thing that really is a head scratcher for me on the AT2040 side is its frequency response. And it's something that I will not fully get behind because it doesn't make any sense, at least not in my mind. Uh, so the AT2040 is from 80 hertz to 16 kilohertz, while the PD-70 is from 20 to 20. Pretty standard, very common, uh, probably the most common frequency response that you will come into contact with. So to dive a little bit deeper, we're gonna look at the frequency response curves and really break them down in the three sections, the lows, the mids, and the highs, and see how these things look on a chart and see if they reflect in their tone. So first off, we are gonna look at the PD-70, which the PD-70 has a nice roll off on the low ends, but that doesn't mean that every roll off is the same. They both have very similar roll offs, but the PD-70 is shifted over about 10 to 20 decibels. The AT2040, on the other hand, as you saw with the frequency response numbers, 80 hertz is its lowest. I mean, of course, it rolls off and they're tapered off and they're not completely gone, but it's significantly lower than the PD70s. And that 10 to 20 decibel difference roll off is is huge i mean when you take away from one part of a microphone the others are emphasized so much more so as far as the lows are concerned the pd70 is certainly my preferred style moving on to the mids we go back to the pd70 which it's fairly flat it's not too crazy from about 150 100 to 1k a little bumps here and there. It's got a little bit, little bit of a dip around like 300 and then uh, levels off there after it till 1K. And then we go into the highs. On the AT2040 side, we have a dip from roughly about 200 to right before 1K. 
and it's a slight dip, nothing too crazy, but it's trying to scoop out some of those mids that might seem a little bit muddy. But if I was just to be kind of clean slate here, it's good. I like the flat curve there. So as far as like those are concerned compared to each other, I really do think they're even on the mid section. So now let's go to the highs with the AT2040 first. From 1K, it starts to rise up to about 3.5K and hits a peak. Then starts to taper off and little bumps here and there as it rolls off into the abyss. So moving on to the PD70, you see we have a rise after 1K, just like the 2040. And there's some bumps in the road. You got some peaks here and there. But for the most part, it goes up to about like 4.5K, then hits a bit of a plateau, slight kind of presence boost there and then t uh, gets to about five decibels higher so plus five decibels and hits its final peak and then tapers off all right so two more tests in the studio right now we're going to do a noise test where we just be quiet and just hear the natural tones of the microphones i'll boost it up and post we have a mini fridge fan on the computer and a dehumidifier in the other room just so you know and afterwards we're going to do a go around and do the 90s and back up a bit and do the off-axis rejection in the studio here to give an idea of what you're going to have with outside noise if someone in the room is talking or some type of other noise is uh, happening. All right, so you may have heard some crickets outside as well. That could be something that you might have to deal with if you have an open window. Uh, let's do the off-axis rejection. So throughout this video, I've been talking about two, three inches away from these microphones, which is pretty standard for using a dynamic microphone and microphones in general, but specifically the dynamic broadcast style. I'm going to back up a bit and see how they react to that. Okay, I'm about two, three feet away from the fronts of the microphones. Remember, hypercardioid and cardioid here. So we'll be seeing the differences when we go to the 90s and 180. All right, 90 degree test on the PD70 side, stage left. And this is going to be your off-axis rejection closer to the PD70, further away from the AT2040. So right now I'm about 120 degrees to the microphones and you probably notice a difference between both of them. A lot more rejection on both of them. Now as I move a little bit further away, closer to the rears, probably around roughly around 150 degrees, you probably notice a lot more rejection, especially on the AT2040. Now on the stage right side, Audio Technica AT2040 side, uh, this is going to be about two feet away, roughly, and off-axis rejection. The other side of the room has a little more flat surfaces, some masonite walls, and uh, nothing too crazy on one of it. We have uh, some foam pads on one of them, and you obviously see the flag on the other one, so you may have some reflection off that. Uh, we're going to move into the sweet spot right now, roughly about 120 degrees right about here and this is going to be your off-axis rejection for that sweet spot moving a little bit further away you're going to see that we're at 150 degrees roughly now and this is where a lot of your hypercardioid and supercardioid uh really shine with their rejection so hopefully you don't hear me too much all right last test but certainly not least the 180 degree test remember cardioid hypercardioid little bit of pickup on the rear here for the hypercardioid. Uh, just uh, let me know what you think on the 180 degree test. I'm about two feet away from the rears of the microphones. Okay, we are about to enter the hot box, as I like to call it. Actually, I just call it the booth, but it's essentially a hot box right now because it's really freaking hot. So I apologize for my sweating in advance, but let's go and get into the booth. Alrighty, so we're in the booth right now with the AT2040 and the PD70 by Presonus. And I am very interested to see how these things will be performing in a fairly controlled environment. It's not crazy good, but it's better than what most people have. Um, highly recommend everyone watching the booth video, me building this 
kind of just makeshift booth out of moving blankets. So let's switch over to the PD-70. And now you notice that one thing that I'm really noticing right now is there's less body. And that's to be expected uh, because the mids are not as for in the forefront and there isn't that crazy of a low end but it's a nice smooth sound i really like the smooth sound of the pd70 and i've said this a lot and if i get a little bit closer you get more of a low end kind of feel to it and you got that proximity effect going on going back to the 2040 you have a comparison of the low end here and i don't know what it is this this microphone has been very strange for me it's it's been one of those uh, I don't know. It's one of those that it, it like I like it one time and then I don't like it, and now I'm comparing it to other microphones, and it's it's very strange. It's very like it it's kind of got me like hot and cold a lot. So without me going too far into the tones, let's do a plosive test comparison. All right, twenty forty. I don't know. It's not as well. It's not as well enforced as I really wanted it to be, and I noticed some um, plosives when I was talking uh, before, uh, especially in the other test, in the solo video test. So it's a little discouraging, but I have some workarounds. PD seventy. So naturally, that certainly is better. I'm on the AT twenty forty right now, and it's. I don't know. It's really hot and cold. It's really one of those things that I listen to it once, I hear one thing, and then I listen to it again, I hear another. I don't know what it is, but I, I know that the one thing consistently is the mids are a little bit heavy. But if you get up on it, it actually sounds pretty good. And those mids, they're a little bit piercing, but you can use EQ and you can fix that a little bit. Scoop those out a little bit more. They look like they're scooped in the frequency response, but they need to be scooped just a little bit more, at least on my voice. Some people may have uh, different, well, obviously most people have different frequencies of their voice of how it lands on the frequency response or a parametric EQ. And uh, yeah, it might not be as bad for them. I have a nasally voice, so it lands right in that spot. So maybe if you cut it for me, we will see. I did a uh, EQ at the end of the Go XLR mini video with the AT2040. So go check out the outro for that. And um, what's it called? Uh, it will, it will, I'll show you how I EQ'd it. Well, I don't go into depth, but I do EQ it. On the PD-70 side, it, it's still that smooth sound. And I, I really like the sound of it. it. It's just one of those things that keeps continuing to uh, be my favorite of the budget broadcast microphones. I am sweating so much right now. You have no idea. Let's go into the untreated room and hopefully not sweat as much. So the plan here is we're going to do some noise tests and some off-axis rejection. Our noise tests are going to be just the room noise. Then we're going to be doing fan with and without talking, air conditioner high and low with and without talking, and then we're going to do the 90s back a little bit and what we did in the studio before. So you may have heard uh, just one thing, an air conditioner downstairs uh, on, and there's nothing I could do about it. It's going to be on. So that could be something you may deal with with outside noise that's outside of your control. All right, so the fan's on. You just listened to the fan alone with the uh, level boosted, and now this is the mix between my voice and the fan and you may have noticed that with the hypercardioid polar pattern of the AT2040 it may be a little less uh, noisy with the fan because of the angle in which the fan is hitting it. Uh, I, it's probably not significant but it's probably a little bit more than the PD70 but you let me know down in the comments if you notice something like that. All right, so the air conditioner is on low right now, and this is the mix between my voice and the air conditioner. The hypercardioid polar pattern may be better with this because of the angle in which it's relative to the 
air conditioner. Uh, the air conditioner is about two, three feet away that way. All right, so the air conditioner is on high right now, and then this is the mix between my voice and the air conditioner. This is definitely not a scenario where you would be uh, recording audio or trying to get a good take of audio because it's just going to be noisy, and sometimes you have to sacrifice comfort to get a good take or get good content out of your uh, audio, which is difficult, but we deal with it. All right, so... Throughout this video, I've been talking about two, three inches away from the microphones, and this is pretty standard, what you would have as your uh, performance distance. I'm going to back up a little bit, and we'll do the off-axis rejection. All right, I'm about a foot away, and this is what it's going to sound like in an untreated room. Uh, this could be relative to you and your room and whatever room you may want to record in. It's pretty standard, so it should be pretty relative to a lot of people. All right, 90-degree test. Off-axis rejection on the PD-70 side, stage right. And this is what it's going to sound like in the untreated room. There's glass for the windows, so there could be some reflection. There's a flatter wall over there, so that could be some reflections as well. Uh, like I said, the area rug underneath certainly helps, and the stuff in the room certainly helps as well. Next up, let's go into the sweet spot, 120 to 150 degrees roughly. On the hypercardioid, that is significant. Uh, they say that re between that range it usually rejects the most on a hypercardioid or supercardioid polar pattern depending on the model depending on the type of microphone next up stage left on the AT2040 side 90 degree test uh, the hallway you could hear an echo uh, let me know if you hear that echo because I didn't hear it in a couple of tests I've done in the past but if you do let me know because this could be a uh, thing that you deal with uh, if you have a room that the door is open, or if you have a door, possibly you can uh, close that and the echo won't be there, but a flat surface like a door could be a problem. Let's go into the off, uh, the sweet spot. That's what it's called. 120 to 150 degrees, and this is going to be the off X rejection in the sweet spot. Uh, you got a flat wall over there off to the, uh, I guess, your left, and there could be some reflections as well. Okay, so last but certainly not least, two to three feet away from the rears of the microphones. Hypercardioid over here on the AT2040 uh, is known for having a little bit of pickup on the rear, but let me know if you hear a little bit of a significant difference between the 180 degree uh, rejections of the cardioid here and the hypercardioid here. All right, so that's all I got for the untreated room. We're going to go down to the studio. I'm going to edit some of this and give you my impressions after I listen to it in post because you get a better, not necessarily a better, but a, yeah, a better uh, perspective on how it actually sounds without the reverberations of your voice through your skull, which is it's disturbing and disgusting, but it's the truth. All right, that is the AT2040 versus the PD-70, and... The PD-70 is still my favorite. I had some moments of doubt where I was listening to the AT-2040 and I was like, this has some redeeming qualities with its tone. But really, I just came back to the PD-70 as my favorite because I like the smooth tone and I can recognize the potential of the PD-70, meaning the flexibility in which you can EQ it. Now, sure, in some performances was the AT2040 better uh, certainly with the off-axis rejection and certainly with uh, some of that proximity effect it was really nice in the booth I was surprised but for the most part I if I was to go with a percentage of which one I was leaning towards I'd probably go like 55 45 in favor of the PD70 which shows that it's really close uh, with the Rode pod mic comparison, I feel that it was a lot easier to talk about because my opinion on the Rode pod mic is it sounds good naturally, but there's less flexibility when it comes to uh, EQing it, at least in my opinion. I, I know that you can. Of course, you can EQ anything. I just, in my opinion, the more neutral the sound is on a microphone, the easier it is and more flexible it is to manipulate it. Reason why the Sennheiser MKH416, which is very flat and has a nice presence boost in the high end, we're talking a high end microphone is very flat and neutral. 
granted, I can't really say I'm really comparing a thousand dollar microphone to a hundred dollar microphones, but my point is still there where a neutral sound is easier to manipulate, kind of like with a neutral uh tone on your camera if you get like a neutral or more raw or a log form it's easier to color grade it later that's my point and it's some of this stuff does relate to and translates to audio but that's where i'm coming from the more smooth tone the natural tone of the pd70 is for me so thank you all for watching hope you all enjoyed it if you liked the video please hit the like button down below It'd be greatly appreciated helps this video helps this channel and really gets it out to more people so i can grow this channel uh we are coming close to 850 subs which is close to 150 away from getting monetized which would be really cool uh i am hoping to do it by my birthday which is october 25th and by the time this video is out, that's a little more than a month away. So it'd be really cool if I could do that. Uh, there are affiliate links now. I applied for the uh, affiliate program for Amazon. So if you're interested in getting any of the gear that I've mentioned in my videos in the past, in the future, whatever it is, go check out those. And it'd be really helpful and helps me build this channel financially as well. And if you have any comments, questions, or anything whatsoever, you could leave it down in the comments section, or you could hop on my stream. Uh, I'm really trying to do it on the weekends and maybe a little bit during the week, but things are kind of crazy right now. So just throw on the notification bell uh, and subscribe so you'll know when I go live. And that's all I got for you today. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. I missed that. I don't care. I don't care. She's trying to kill me. She's crazy. Lady, you crazy. Jesus. Don't kill me, lady. Is there any coinage? Oh, no. It's just run. Just run. Oh, my God. The lady tried to kill me.